Okay. So, uh, in our last lecture we were talking about the uh, osmotic pressure, osmolarity, osmolality and so on. Uh, I wanted to go through one mathematical calculation for us to understand that when a solution is added, when a, when a fluid is added to the body which you might experience, you would actually experience on the hospital floors what happens, how do you assess what is going to happen to the various fluid compartments. So, let us say if I, if I make, if I make this diagram over here. So, this is a healthy person, he has his, uh, this is ICF, this is ECF this part is intravascular compartment, this is interstitial compartment and what we are doing is we are going to be hanging up a drip and we will be adding 3 percent sodium chloride solution to his intravascular compartment and we will be adding 2 liters of it. So, the setup is that we have a healthy person in which we are going to infuse 2 liters of 3 percent sodium chloride solution. So, again I have said it again and again before most of the time the changes are going to appear in the vascular compartment first, then they appear in the interstitial compartment and then if at all there is osmolarity changes they would be reflected back in the ICF as well. So, here the change is going to appear of course, in the intravascular system 2 liter of 3 percent sodium chloride is going to be infused correct. So, let us say before infusing the sodium chloride into this person's body his state was this way. This is is a normal healthy 70 kilogram person. We have been using his example or her example throughout our studies here. Extracellular, extracellular fluid volume about 14 liters, intracellular fluid volume about 28 liters, total fluid volume 42 that is the 60 percent of the 70 kilogram right. Osmolarity remember 0 0.9 percent sodium chloride is almost the same or iso osmolar with the osmolarity within our body. I just keep hitting this again and again because you are going to encounter 0 0.9 percent sodium chloride very commonly in the hospital floors. So, the osmolarity present in the body is 280 milliosmoles. Now, remember this thing this osmolarity is going to be equal in intracellular fluid and extracellular fluid. That is the point of all of these lectures that we should understand that the membrane or the cell membrane which is here let us depict that over here. The cell membrane which sits between the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid this cell membrane is semi permeable membrane and it would allow water to move easily while solutes cannot move that easily. Now, the osmolarity outside, so let us say it is 280, the same osmolarity has to be here as well that is a point. And if that is not the case as we would see as we progress through this example, water would shift from one to the other compartment in accordance with the water concentration and it would correct the osmolarity. It would not correct the osmolarity by reducing or increasing it, but water would move from one compartment to the other compartment to make the osmolarity equal in both compartments. That is the behavior of the water across a semi permeable membrane. We talked about it and I would just quickly revise this thing. The movement of fluid between the intravascular compartment and, and interstitial compartment is not dependent upon the solute movement. 
that movement is regulated or is controlled by hydrostatic pressure and on cortic pressure right so we talked about it the movement of fluid between in in this compartment the factors here are on cortic pressure and hydrostatic pressure but the movement of fluid between these two compartments so for all practical purposes i can take actually this line out and i can say this is ecf and this is icf so movement between these two compartments is governed by the solute concentrations so water will move to correct the solute concentration so osmolarity in the two compartments is equal it will be kept equal and whenever there is a problem in the osmolarity whenever there is a change in that water would immediately start rushing and try to correct it so in in a normal person before receiving this 2 liter of 3% sodium chloride 70 kg weight his status is such that ecf is 14 liter icf is 28 liter total body fluid is 42 liters the osmolarity is 280 uh, milliosmoles you know a normal rule of thumb is that you pick up the sodium concentration in the excess cell of fluid and almost double it so normally sodium is about 142 um, milliosmoles so you double that and that would give you roughly the osmolarity of the uh, body so th there are multiple formulas where there are many various ways but a good rule of thumb is to quickly double the value of the sodium osmolarity and that would give you the body osmolarity so anyways coming back here osmolarity is 280 in the extracellular fluid and in the intracellular fluid total osmolarity again the same so the question is how many milli osmoles do we have so it's very simple you have 14 liters every liter has osmolarity of 280 you multiply the 280 with 14 and that is the total milli osmoles present in the ecf compartment similarly you multiply 28 liters with the osmolarity of 280 milli osmoles per liter and that is your total osmolarity or milli osmoles present outside the in the intracellular fluid and this is your total um, milli osmoles so frankly what you have to do is you have to pick up this osmolarity divide it by this and you would get this number correct so this is the healthy state normal state before giving the 3% sodium chloride so now we go here and we would say okay fine hang up the 3% sodium chloride and let's see what happens 3% sodium chloride means 3 g of sodium chloride per 100 ml of fluid that can also mean 30 g of sodium chloride per 1 liter of fluid now we know this thing from our previous lectures that if we have 58.5 g of sodium chloride in 1 liter that will be called one or smaller solution so we if we have 58.5 if i call this about 60 then the gram here we are seeing is 30 so almost half so instead of one osmol this solution is almost looking like half osmol but anyways the best way to handle that is to pick up the 30 g and divide it with the 58.5 g which is the one osmoles unit and that would give us the exact mole or exact molarity so 0.513 moles per liter which is sort of half molar solution as i said before see this is 60 about 60 and this is 30 now it is half molar solution remember we talked about it before that usually we do not speak in moles terms or osmoles terms we speak in milli osmoles terms so what we do is we multiply this with 1000 and that brings the unit down to milli osmoles so 530 milli osmoles per liter this this number and this number is the same the only difference is that here we are saying moles per liter or osmoles per liter osmoles per liter and here we are saying milli osmoles per liter now we know that we have 2 liter of fluid instead of 1 so that means we need to double this number up 
because this is 513 milli 